In this video, we'll look at how transport layer functionality has evolved beyond traditional TCP mechanisms in recent years. Let's get started. TCP is used today in many environments for which it was never intended, which has resulted in it being continually developed over time in order to meet new challenges. And today, some of that development has left TCP behind and adopted reliability and congestion control mechanisms on top of UDP. So in this video, we'll look at some of this development. Keep in mind that TCP and UDP have been the principal transport protocols of the internet for about 40 years. Over that time, there have been many variants of TCP that have come along to meet certain challenges. Some of these include long fat networks, meaning high bandwidth networks with high delay. By the time the sender is aware of a loss, it has many packets which it needs to retransmit and it must start slowly again, causing the pipeline to sit idle for a significant period of time. We also have the prevalence of wireless networks. Wireless networks are much less reliable than wired networks and so they lose packets or corrupt packets on a regular basis. And this has nothing to do with congestion. However, TCP treats all loss as due to congestion. So there have been variants of TCP designed to distinguish between loss due to environmental challenges versus congestion loss. There have also been developments for long delay links, such as satellite links. Data center networks introduce a number of challenges which were not anticipated in the early days of the internet, as do the idea of low priority background flows. Those have all been addressed by TCP variants, but recently we've also seen the latest version of the HTTP protocol moving to re-implement some of the features on, of TCP on top of UDP. This is known as the Quick Protocol. The primary development driver here is Google, hoping to increase the speed at which web pages can be loaded for consumers. So where HTTP2 combined with TLS used TCP over IP, HTTP3 is a combination of the HTTP2 directives with the Quick Protocol running over UDP. Quick also uses some of the same approaches we've already seen for handling error control and congestion control. But one of the primary motivations for making this move is to expedite connection setup. All the state that Quick needs for reliability, congestion control, authentication, and encryption are established in a single round trip time. It also multiplexes multiple application streams over a single connection. Let's compare the connection establishment. We hadn't looked at it before, but TLS requires an additional handshake after the TCP session is established. So this means two round trip times are spent with the TCP connection followed by the TLS handshake before data can be sent. In contrast, the quick handshake handles both the connection setup and the security handshake in one round trip time. With TCP, there can be a head of line locking problem when multiple GET requests are pipelined behind one another. With quick, this process is parallelized which means that an error in the reliable data transfer doesn't have to hold up other requests from being delivered. This brings us to the end of chapter three, which has been all about the transport layer. To quickly summarize, we've looked at multiplexing, demultiplexing, reliable data transfer, flow control, congestion control, and the specific ways in which these services are instantiated for internet protocols. Next, we will transition to looking at the network core, and the network layer itself is divided into two chapters. First, we'll look at the data plane, followed by the control plane. So in the next video, we'll begin looking at chapter four about the data plane. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.